Okay, we're back, we're live, we're here. I'm Jay Fidel. It's the three o'clock rock, and we are talking with Marianne Sasaki, who is an attorney, um, and she is a host of uh, Life in the Law, which, which appears on Think Tech at one o'clock on Wednesdays. Right. And we are delighted to have her here on our new uh, inaugural, second inaugural show, that is Trump Week, where we're gonna report every week on what um, President Trump is doing. <laughs> Okay, we'll have a lot we, to report on. We have, we have, yes, we, we have a lot of work to, to do. I mean, if you pick up the New York Times every day, the first 20 articles, maybe more, are all about Trump. They, they swore they were going to cover him, and they are covering him. And I think it, it, it behooves all the press, including us, um, in order to cover him. Uh, we got to do that to protect uh, our democracy, really, um, mm -hmm. as never before. So the, the, the subject of the show last time was a new use for executive orders, and you and I were discussing that briefly a moment ago. Um, and I'd like to, you know, touch base with you on that. But the, the main subject of our show here today now is um, can protest uh, 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 prevent a national decline? Um, and I'd like to talk to you about protest in this country, protest back in the 60s, protest, protest since that time, and protest now, as, as we are seeing every, every day, really. Every day, yeah. yeah. But you had some thoughts about executive orders, and indeed, uh, President Trump is using them as no president has used them before. And the fact that, um, you know, uh, it's very interesting to compare what Barack Obama did because he had essentially no choice. Congress wasn't giving him anything and he had to get stuff done, so he acted by executive order. And for the lack of any statement in the Constitution or in the statutes about the limits of power on executive order, which actually is a flaw in our system, in my opinion, um, you know, that's what he did for two or three hundred executive orders. Now, Trump is a little different because uh, he has a Congress that would go along. Uh, well, yeah, they, you know, with Paul immigration, Congress. would they have gone along with this? Maybe so. Maybe so. Um, but it takes time, and he doesn't want to spend that right. time. He wants it right now. He wants to have that, that primacy, and he knows that it takes time to do Congress, and it takes time to resolve things in the courts, and there's a risk in Congress to some extent, and there's a larger risk in the courts for him. So he acts uh, summarily, and uh, we have a new a new model developing. Isn't that terrifying? He acts summarily. Summarily, I, I know, said. That's I what know. I said. Summarily. That's terrifying. I mean, without I mean, consulting what? his United States Attorney, uh, Department of Justice. In fact, um, finding that, that the uh, acting uh, 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 what do you call it? The acting um, deputy deputy uh, well, deputy associate uh, deputy attorney general attorney general uh, disagrees with him. Uh, he didn't consult with her. She noticed it, and, and then she reacted. So <clears throat> I, my point, though, is that uh, we are, we're seeing new expansion of that power now. Your thoughts, please. I, my thoughts. I would like to see a more deliberate president. Uh, I don't. I don't need to have a show every night uh, with respect to some kind of broad idea that he sold the public when he was running for office. He's no longer running for office. He's now governing, and. Uh, he's still uh, trying to please the crowds, and so so he moved up the date that he was going to appoint the Supreme Court justice. He, on a Friday night, without without really thinking it through, signed this executive order and didn't notify any any uh, immigrant people from immigration or the airports, and no one knew how to do it or what who it applied to and how how it was going to become accomplished. Like, I think you know. This guy's got his finger on the button. Like, I, I don't want to summarily uh, like a, a guy who 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 who, uh, who governs by fiat to be uh, so close to the to the nuclear button. If 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 you know what I mean. Well, are there limitations um, on his powers under you know the executive order technique as it is evolving now? I don't know. I guess it'd have to be. Um, don't we have balance of powers in this country? Not anymore. <laughs> wow, you heard it here on Think Tank. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Is that so. a constitutional crisis? Yes. Well, you know, the reason I say not anymore is because, um, first of all, the three parts of government w were tasked with doing their own, uh, own, own thing, but they were tasked also with 
being integrated. So if you if you can't work, if the president of the Congress just can't work to the Congress, just going to stonewall the president, then the separation of powers isn't working because there's no, nothing is working. It's not working. Nothing's happening. Yeah, right, exactly. So. And, and the Supreme Court has gotten so politicized that it just seems to be an extension of the executive office. I know that sounds terrible, but you could pick out each, um, each uh, justice and how they will go and how they will vote by who appointed them. So, you know, I don't think uh, it's working so well. And, mm. and I think the, the executive branch is becoming increasingly powerful. And you know what I think what happens when the executive branch becomes increasingly what powerful? Happens? Hitler. They become dictators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's not the first uh, time we've heard that. Remember? Rounding up strange strangers, and that sounds familiar. Round, going to sanctuary cities and rounding up people. Uh, you know, uh, not taking action against them on the basis of religion. Yeah, exactly. And and just doing it without the authority of Congress or you know consideration by Congress. I, I think the executive power is pretty strong right now. Yeah. Okay, let's go to our main topic, okay. protest. Um, your sister marched in Washington. Mm -hmm. You would have watched, wa marched too, I'm sure. Oh, no, no. Here's what happened with me in Washington. I went to fly to Washington to march, and, and an airline, which will remain nameless, uh, delayed my flight. And as a consequence of that, I missed my connecting flight to Washington. So they put me on another flight to Washington, and that one was three hours late. So I, I spent the entire march in Washington in JFK Airport. Oh. So, but I'm, but I'm, I'm taking legal action against them. Okay. But I know, but everybody I know, because I was part of the co state coordinating committee with respect to the march on Washington. I, you know, I followed it very closely while I was there. Um, I'm so very happy to report Brian Schatz showed up, uh, Colleen Hanabusa, is that the correct pronunciation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, this was an organized march, though. It was organized, but you know, Jane, it was only organized in two months. I mean, Two months is a long time, given the way things move these days, Marianne. I suppose that's you right. Know, I mean, how much time, how much notice did we have of that executive order on Friday? Right. Virtually none. Right. Uh, so you, if you quickly. want to respond to that, you really got to get your act together in way less right. than two months. So I mean, I'm talking about, uh, you know, what what is the appropriate kind of reaction if you or people in general or a lot of people in general disagree with what the president is doing by way of the, these expanded uh, executive orders and whether that's that works for well, example I'm... you know did it really work to have the march in march in washington did it really work to have the march all over last saturday um, in all these various cities did it work did it achieve anything um, well you know i think you know it's difficult i mean it's it, it's certainly not going to achieve uh, quickly, the goal, the goals that they were marching for. First of all, I think the women's march was particularly to protect uh, reproductive rights. Oh, but everything got swept into it. Everything. No, yeah, I, I, yes, everything did. But um, you know, the impact. I think it had a tremendous impact. What was the impact? I, well, people from every country participated. Every state. That's participation, but did did one no, member did of Congress something? did one member of no, Congress stand up No, but up you know what say, they're going to change. I feel emboldened now. Cha this is what the, uh, this is what's going to change. The midterm election. Watch the midterm election very carefully. You can't have this many people in the streets and with this consistent a message and not have some some change in Congress during the midterms. I really think that's, that that's very important. That's what we're aiming for. Because look, is Donald Trump going to be? Oh, there's you know 400,000 people in Washington, so I'm not going to do what I want to do. Never happen. The pressure has to be consistent. It has to be uh, long term. Well, it ha you let me take you on a, a, a trip back to 19. 68 or so, okay? There were mobs in the streets. Yeah. The students were um, rioting. Uh, there was even violence in Kent State. Right. Somebody was killed over the right. issue. Um, and, um, you know, it was, it was very clear that the public was protesting um, on a continuing basis. Uh, lots of students, but also everybody. I mean, everybody I knew was protesting. And yet, the war went on for four or five years after that. It did. But so what effect did it have? Well, I think it compelled Lyndon Johnson not to run again. 
in 19... There, there's a whole story about Lyndon Johnson and the war and his attempt to settle it, and Richard Nixon recently, you know, uh, revealed right. uh, that Rich, Richard Nixon um, scuttled his attempts, Johnson's attempts to settle the war. Um, but, but I didn't be, know that, actually. Yeah, that well, that, that was... Uh, gee, I saw that only a couple weeks ago. It's remarkable. But, <clears throat> but putting that aside, though, fact is that all those protests, all those people in the street, and they were passionate, and they were burning I mean, flags and all this... That didn't stop the war for five years. Where was Congress? Were they sleeping? Well, I, you know, I don't, I still think it was a victory. I, I mean, I don't think the war would have, I mean, look, we're in a war. How long has our war gone on? 10 years or something? We're in an, an everlasting war. Vietnam could have easily been the same. It could have been an everlasting war. There was a draft. They could have just kept feeding people and keeping, you know, keeping up. They were losing, so they could have just kept fighting and fighting and fighting. And it, I think if it had not been for the people, it would not, would not have been as resolved in as quickly as five years. And I know that sounds, you know, uh, my, yeah. my view is five years is much too long. I agree, I agree, but uh, but I think that that's what it took. But I'll, let me give you another example of national protest. What about the Civil Rights March in 1964, right, or 63, with, with Martin Luther King? You can't, that had a tremendous impact, I think, on... Uh, particularly Caucasian people who were unaware of the of, of the situation uh, for voting for uh, African Americans and I think I think that that March really uh, you know well, wasn't wasn't he murdered in there somewhere yes but what year was he murdered he was murdered in 1969 or eight one of those mm. nine I think so to me that had a huge effect that wasn't a protest that was a murder no I I know, but, and people but, were really, really bothered by that. But the civil rights movement accomplished what it accomplished by protest. It accomplished the rights that, you know, the right to vote for um, African Americans in places they could could not have voted, or the poll tax and stuff. So th it was solely accomplished by protest. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, Gandhi. I mean, I hate to harken back to Gandhi, but it, it works. It works if you. But you have to keep involved. You have to keep up the pressure. You have to have a broad range of people w focused on the same goal. That's going to well, be a little a bit of an issue. A friend of mine, in anticipation of this show, I posed that issue to a friend of mine. And she indicated that there is a risk that you can you can go soft on protest. What I mean is you can keep on protesting and protesting and protesting, and after a while, people get used to it. They get inoculated somehow, and they don't take it seriously anymore. All oh, those guys, they're always protesting. I think and, that's and you right. Lose, you lose the, the vitality of it if, right. you keep, if you keep doing that. So, so the, the impact little... wanes. It, the impact can definitely wane if you protest about every little thing. But let me tell you, this going to be coming an LGBTQ uh, protest in Washington over Gay Pride Week. Weekend, and you'll see the turnout there, and it'll be big because the gay community is just livid with Mike Pence, and they just will ha have nothing to do with Donald Trump and Mike Pence, and, and and that'll be I think that'll be a very influential uh, march as well. I mean, yeah, you, you get fatigue, march fatigue, yeah, sure, but you know, Jay, I've been marching for like I don't know, 35 years or something, and. I'm still going. Yeah. There's always a core group yeah. that will keep going. Yeah, that's um, that's Marianne Sasaki. She she's been marching for 35 years and giving away her age for just I, as long. I'm, I march with a member of the Lincoln Brigade. <laughs> that really shows my that age. That really shows her age. We'll take a short break and contemplate that thought. Aloha. I'm Carl Campagna, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. I hope you join us over the next several weeks as we take a deep dive into biofuels in Hawaii and explore the alternative fuels supply chain necessary for the local and global transition towards transportation fuel sustainability. Join us as we have good conversations with our farmers, our producers, our conversion technologies, our investors, and our legislators as we try to achieve our transportation sustainability goals. See you soon. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching.
We can hardly wait to get back. That you, uh, yes. <laughs> this is Marianne Sasaki, a lawyer and um, also a, a marcher and a host. Oh, um, yes, I'm definitely a marcher. <laughs> and so we're talking today in our Trump, Trump week, we're talking about protests as a way to deal with things that a president does that you don't like. And, you know, how do you do that? And does it work in this country? We have this whole huge infrastructure of government with three branches, a lot of process, a lot of, you know, a lot of things that are hard for people to understand, actually, on how decisions get made. But our founding fathers... So you fathers. go to the streets, you, you do Occupy Wall Street, okay? Right. Occupy Wall Street hit the press, um, and all these cities were involved and embroiled in Occupy Wall Street and Occupy other things, too. It sort of spread to other things. What effect? Any effect at all? No, I think Occupy Wall Street, it, 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 it petered out for sure. And uh, partly I think it wasn't a broad-based enough movement. I mean, it was a very uh, slim segment of, of the left. And uh, this is different. This is grandma's. This is, um, you know, your sister, your, your aunt, your cousin. Um, Little kids. Little kids don't know one end from the other. No, of course they Sorry. don't know. I'm not, but 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 it's, I I always find it uh, uh, uplifting to see grandma marching and mommy in the. In so the what I hear you saying, Marianne, is that you if you have a lot of people, a big demographic, a lot of age groups, a lot of groups, and a diversified group, if you will, right. um, then that group will be more. That voice is louder. Their voice is louder, more impressive, and mm -hmm. maybe that will have an effect. Who will the effect be on? Because the people who go jubilation over Trump, I love that term, uh, you know, those... Jubilation T. Cornpone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Where else? Where else? <laughs> Wasn't that Lil Abner or something? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the people, you know, they're not affected. Trust me, they're not affected by all those women marching in all those cities. Uh, they believe that Trump is right and they're going to stick to their guns. You know, they're not changing. I think so the politicians are, are unnerved. It's, Don't you think Congress are unnerved? Legislators? Yeah. How about judges? Are judges beyond that? I, I don't think judges are beyond politics, but their, their politics but, um, no, takes place in a more rarefied street atmosphere. Street protest is not really necessarily politics. It's the voice of the people. It's a statement right. of, of, I guess, how the people feel. Right. And after all, um, this is a country in which the, the views of the people are theoretically very important. Well, I would argue in the 1960s, um, even before the Supreme Court heard the voice of the people with respect to African American rights and um, actively tried to participate in that movement. I mean, that's why it was an activist court called the so-called activist court. Now, I don't think, I think that the Supreme Court justices are far too removed from uh, the needs and the wants of the people, and I think that... Uh, that's, a, that's a hard statement. I know, but oh. I do think that's true. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, they read the paper, but maybe reading the paper doesn't tell you what's going on in the street. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, the, reading the New York Times and actually not, not uh, knowing what's going to be happening. But doesn't CNN tell you? Doesn't, doesn't, don't, don't, all those news channels, don't they tell you? Yeah, don't they, they give do. you a video of what's going on in the street? No, they do. They do. But, but I, you know, the, the court is not supposed to be occupied with such, and I said this on my show earlier, with such mundane affairs. They, they, their, uh, their occupation is the larger project that is uh, American democracy, right? I mean, they're not really supposed to no, be with the rabble. you think the people on the, the street are talking about larger issues, you know, the future of the country? American values, the, the future of the American system. Well, Those yeah, are they are, but issues. in pretty broad strokes, the 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 Supreme Court takes it on in small bites and like in a more uh, elevated, in a more elevated language. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I do think I think you know the Constitution guarantees our right to uh, speech, free speech. It guarantees our right to con congregate. And I think the forefathers understood that this would be a very important part of our democracy. And, and needless to say, so is freedom of the press. And you know, Donald Trump and his, his ilk keep telling the press to shut up and um, you know, to say the New York Times, you know, trying to disseminate these alternate facts and 
undermine the press at every every juncture. And you know, I, I just would like to remind people that it, it's the the right to press was a hard fought constitutional right, and not and, available everywhere. Yeah, right. And 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 it should be treated with the respect that it deserves. It really should. It, I I don't like the way the Trump. Um, the, the Trump administration is treating members of the press because the members of the press are, you know, essential to a yeah. democracy. Now, one of the things about a protest is the press covers the protest, right? right? Um, but when you question whether there were X number of people there or X number of people somewhere else, you know, like at the inauguration day issue about what size of the crowd and all that stuff, um, then the president has the power through Twitter and through his own news statements to diminish the effect of the protest. Yeah, well, he, that's, what, fact, he that's what he do. wants to do. Yeah, and Steve Bannon, who is now uh, replaced uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff as his, as his advisor, who is a, who is a press person. He's a, uh, you know, Breitbart is, is a, you know, alt-right, as they say, uh, press venue. Um, wants to undermine uh, the press and wants to wants all facts to be a jumble and anything could be the truth like it's tr it could be true that Trump ha ha had the biggest inauguration ever or it could be true that the women's march uh, was the but smallest you see, you're ever. making the case that if I give you millions of people around the country all speaking up from various demographics that ought to have an effect on say legislators for example I think it will but Okay, if I diminish the, 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 and that gets telescoped by the press. If they don't cover it, it didn't happen really for the public. That's true. So if, if uh, you know, Trump has a way to diminish the credibility of the press, diminish the information of the press, um, hey, and, and you, you know who likes to diminish the, the, on uh, what they report? the press too? You know what guy like to diminish the effects of the press, a free press? Hitler. <laughs> well, you know, people are saying that more and more. I, I but I mean, he's you. doing, it's the same M.O., it's, you know, the first shut the press up, right up. up. Shut the press up because you know what? We can't have that. We can't have that, you know, lack of control in an unmanageable environment where we can't control the message. Control the message. But, but see, but that's the, the reality here is that he's working against the effect that you're relying on. The effect of having millions of people out there who will affect uh, the next and midterm yeah. elections. He should be. I mean, he should be afraid. He's working well. He's afraid, but he's also working pretty efficiently at it. I think, all things considered. Well, I think Nixon did. Nixon did too. You compare Nixon to Trump? I Nixon. I, 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 I look fondly. Ba I look fondly back upon Nixon. <laughs> Trump makes me look, look fondly back, frankly. Um, oh, for the good old days. Yeah, right. No, but I mean, when it came to demonstrations and stuff, Nixon had his ways. He had his enemies list, and he had his ways of undermining the you know, protesters and the press. And so, you know, he, he that's not a new thing that a president should target protesters as a as a as problematic for their administration. Yeah, okay. All right. But uh, it does diminish the power of, of the protest. Yeah. To have you know its size and shape uh, and 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 um, its intentions, cri you know, criticized yep. and, and so forth. So uh, I'm still looking for a way um, that people in general can speak out. They can write to their legislator. Oh yeah, you can. Well, th so that's part that of the may movement. That maybe even more effective if the if the letters come in in big numbers. Writing now. and calling. With, if there's a bit, very big movement to stop Betsy DeVos from being the Secretary of Education, and um, there were. I think she has a problem, by the way. So there is some success here. Yeah, yeah. The, and part of it was calling the uh, the three votes that were needed in order to you know in order for her to become the uh, secretary the, the one thing the marchers are doing is they're very well organized at the grassroots level with respect to uh, politics and how to use new media to uh, affect uh, Congress people our Congress people and, and senators and so on so um, I, I think the midterm election is going to be a big upset. I really do. Okay, but let me let me offer this thought, uh, and that is uh, looking back to the campaign itself, when uh, there were uh, incidents of violence uh, at various campaign rallies or competing rallies, uh, if not violence, then bullying mm -hmm. uh, and name calling, mm -hmm. can, you know, uh, and all that. It happened a number of times. I'm not sure all of them were reported. Some of them maybe were minimal, but it, it did happen well enough to see, see it in the press every now yeah. and then. 
Um, and I, you know, in my view, maybe other people might differ that a lot of this was fomented by things that Donald Trump said in the course of the campaign. He stirred up his crowd. He stirred up his crowd, and and that led to fisticuffs a number of occasions. Um, and that's, you know, I guess also a political trick that we've seen used elsewhere. Oh yeah. In order to provoke people. So my question to you is, aren't you concerned, Marianne, that as these protests go by, and I, I surmise there will be there'll be other offensive things this president does. Yeah, I think that's a pretty that's good That's going bet. to result in bet. other protests. And the protests may very well grow in size, number, and intensity. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't, aren't you worried that those protests can, or with his help, uh, get, get violent? Get violent. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm a pacifist in the vein of Daniel Berrigan. So I never expect violence from you, Mary. <laughs> I want to be so clear about that. I, so that, so that, that, that's sort of my my take. Um, I, I, I think red revolutions can be bloodless, but uh, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of, of being attacked or being arrested or... Wouldn't stop you from protesting. No, no, you can't count me that way. I mean, I think that's a very poor way to go because I think that just emboldens people. I mean, uh, John Lewis is the perfect example. You know, they constantly played the, the, the tape of him getting beat up during the civil rights movement. And, I, you know, that stirred people up. That didn't, that didn't uh, make people afraid. They made, they made them more determined. So, I mean, you know, if you're going to stand up, you've got to stand up. No, suppose it's a gray area, you know? Suppose it's wrong, but it's not as wrong as some of the other things that he has done. You know, that he finds, I wouldn't call it a moderate result, but he finds a result that is not as, as, as wild as some of the things we've seen him do. Mm -hmm. Would you protest in that case? Uh, or would you not protest because this is, relatively speaking, not nearly as wild as some other things that he's done? That's such a hard question because, you know, it's sort of the same things. Well, the, the, the bar has been put, pushed over this way. So now what would have been during the Obama administration uh, an affront, Guantanamo, right? Not closing Guantanamo, an affront to any, you know, left, yes, upstanding left like me. Um, that's, there's so many worse things that could happen. That seems like a, a lesser thing, right? So um, I actually think no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't protest every every little move. I think strategic protesting is much more effective. I don't think, you know, if he, I don't know, w what he could do that it would bother me, but it wouldn't bother me so much. Um, I, I think we need to be strategic with our protests. Yeah, and the operative word is we, because I think with social media, uh, organization can happen fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And I, I would predict for you that over the next few years, organizations will emerge in our country that call people together for this protest kind mm -hmm. of thing mm -hmm. uh, for appropriate measures, for appropriate issues, for appropriate offensive um, you know, decisions by the president. We'll see how we'll the see Supreme Court goes. Yeah. But we have to cover it. You know why? Because we are committed to cover Trump on Trump Week. Okay. Thank you, Marianne.